above that. Nature, this was Two Tree Island, which was a mixture of harbour, housing, uh, bird sanctuary, a bit of uh, um, salt, salt marsh agronomy, and, and uh, pleasure. Nature Conservancy, Port of London Authority, Department of the Environment, Essex River Authority, Greater London Council, British Airports Authority, Wildfowl Trust, British Water Sea Federation, Thames Estuary Development, Crown Estates, Essex County Council, South End, Benfleet Urban District Council, Eastern Sports Council, National Yacht Harbour Association, Ship and Boat Builders Federation, Essex Naturalist Trust, I don't think that's strippers, Countryside Commission and the Royal Yachting Association. Now, that wasn't many years ago, and I've got, a, I've got a feeling it was the wrong list. Though we produced a scheme, and the list was, was very impressive. Um, and it, it wasn't aiming to miss, it was aiming to hit. There are two other fields, um, one of which I'll mention very quickly, um, which again was... Uh, research and cooperation, the second of which I would like to deal more detail tomorrow, and I hope we can have a discussion tonight, because I did start a bit late, and it's still quite early. Um, the two, a long time ago, um, we, we purchased, or, or had the right on purchasing a geodesic dome, the, the geodesic fiberglass domes that had no metal in them, which were being made for the dew line early warning stations in Canada, were manufactured by English Electric at Freckleton, which is the old uh, English Electric airport outside Preston, which is, is still, apart from that plant in Blackpool, one of the best centers for fiberglass, you know, uh, um, structural fiberglass manufacturer in this country. I mean, really tough stuff. And they made one dome too many. And uh, in those days, I knew uh, Fuller, and he said, look, can you sell it? They've done one too many, and it would help all around if, we, um, if that one was, was lost and bought, etc. And so we did actually do a trial erection thing at Freckleton, and we were going to use it for this thing at Claverton in Bristol, uh, Bath. Point was that that started me interested in, in non-metal structuring. Um, albeit in, in a, a reasonably rigid way in, in the form of these ray domes with great returns on them, a lot of uh, fiberglass fabric in them. But what it led to was they, they only had, you, you couldn't twist them too much or they, because normally they were meant to be s s static and um, it makes you stutter this stuff, it's wonderful, you must have some, Peter. Uh, meant to be st static. Uh, and the only way we could really keep them, because uh, we wanted to raise the dome up and down. In fact, ray domes, they were fixed. They were in the snow, they could take the sun, they take the snow, they send out the Z rays, pick up the messages and the whole lot. But we wanted to move ours up and down because we didn't want a door in it. We wanted people to come in and then you knew the show was about to start because you couldn't get in anymore because the gap was down to a few inches. Um, and it was only through using uh, counterbalance hydraulics uh, that, that could do anything like the, the accuracy of adjustment, not pneumatics or anything, hydraulics. And that started uh, a, a, an interest and a cooperation with uh, Martinair, who were mainly uh, pneumatic people, but, but from their name, you can tell, but had a hydraulics division. Something which we've never actually dropped in the office is this business of, of using on one side, we've had air in our air structure's interest. On the other side, we've had water as, 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 a, as, a, as a power, as a very delicate power control, only if, you're, if you've got plenty of time on your hands. Now, the whole, so I hope I brought it back a little bit to the question of, of time on your hands and timing seems just as important to me in the nature of research being related to the, to the immediacy or the, 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 the niceness, the accuracy of retrieval as it is to content, and the quality of cooperation being as beneficial to research as is the cooperation in achieving a particular single first objective.
Uh, now I'd like a discussion. I don't know. I, what time is I going to finish? Yeah. People can leave. You want to? Yeah. <coughs> yes. Yes. I mean, yeah. This is marvelous. Actually, you must try it. Sid, why are you so intrigued with your 1908 blank luxury sheet giving authority? to your later questionnaires, when two minutes before that, you had said that continuity, knowledge, the past, and all authorities like that are not for me. Are you not contradicting yourself, sir? What, what did I say? <laughs> no, what, what did I say? The knowledge of such authority is not for me. Yes, you, you really were being very anti-historical, and then suddenly anti historical, and then suddenly ah. out of the blue, oh yes, out I was. of the blue yes. comes this invocation of Purely. history to give you. <laughs> no, but it wasn't giving. What I was trying to do, no, this is, I was trying to show how how marvelous it was that there was in relation to the nature, the degree of looseness in research that I have been trying to propound tonight as being actually the beneficial end of the game, how absolutely timeless it is. That's why I compared this with the, with the generator form, which was not done in conjunction with the, this society in 1908, and, and had been done in 1977, and I bought this in, in uh, Ludlow last summer. I knew nothing of that nature of questioning Could you that please? I was delighted that was but I didn't draw on it I wasn't delighted because just look how clever they were in 1908 I was delighted that 1908 and 1977 the difference between Ludlow and and Florida and the phrenological society and sea price mattered not one jot not that's what delighted me not not a bad answer not a question <laughs> Funny enough, it's quite near the truth, that answer. Good. And now the question. Uh, what is it that you're getting at when you go around there seeking out the, the, your almanac on the left, suggesting that everybody should become almanac conscious, almanac maniacs, if you like, when, when, there are two difficulties in this problem. What's that? That's right. I'm all right. I'm wild. <laughs> are you trying to, with this method that you're proposing, are you trying to loosen intentions, loosen prejudice, or are you trying to tighten up arbitrariness? I'm trying to loosen intentions which, in effect, loosens prejudice. Well-defined intentions, unknowingly, to God and those who write them down, down the scale, cause the most monstrous prejudices at the most delicate stage of, of, of design achievement. Yes. Good. So I'm trying to do the former, not the latter. Yes. Thank you. And the sad thing is, because of the, just because of the difficulty of the whole scene and the shortage of time and things, unintentionally, intentions are driven home as prejudices in the educational scene, not least in architecture, which is a great pity, because I think it's unintentional. And it's the timing. Anything to stop it. <laughs> I love it. What about punch of a kind that can never be substantiated? Punch. Punch. Hunt, I mean, not just punch, which 
if you spent long enough, you could somehow post-rationalize or prove <coughs> even. But hunch that, by its nature, some kind of hunches, which actually there is, there is no data, there's no, it's, it's just hunch. I, I answer the first question. I go by them, whether they're ever substantiated or not. But the only strength I draw, I mean, I, I, that is a very secret answer to you. I mean, there happen to be a few people listening in. But in a way, uh, the only substantiation I have is Popper's delight in negative hunches. I mean, the, you know, I think it is, it is the Popperian part of me that I really do feel that, that, that uh, doubt is constructive and hunches, if put up against the normal set of criteria, are riddled with doubt. But you never have to explain a hunch. So I've actually done a, a, a you know, I've done a, a cheat, I've done a, I've, I've coated... I, I, I haven't really done positive negativism. I've really coated uh, Popper's constructive doubt with, with icing sugar, which I then find sufficiently edible to, to swallow for my own consumption. Yeah, I, I, I really, I don't think, I think, I think actually you can, you can become a broken man mentally to try and justify a hunch later on. Or you become a bigot. Hunches aren't arbitrary, no. There's no, no. There's very direction bits. Oh, and I didn't, did I say they were arbitrary? No, you didn't. No, I didn't. The implication was that maybe they could have been. Ah, no, I, no, you're absolutely right. I'm glad this is becoming a discussion. They are certainly not. No, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm for hunches. Fortunately, they're, 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 they're um, Curricula vitae does not demand any questioning. <laughs> That's the marvelous thing about them. But I think some people, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of, oh dear. I suppose if you mention his name, wouldn't, no one knows anyhow, so perhaps. But anyhow, there's an architect who some years ago was very central to, to uh, great um, pan, pan Europe schemes. Uh, not a student. A real serious little liner for, for, and I mean physical schemes, you know, the cities spreading across from England to Europe and things, and bridges and things. And um, he's, he's, he is still alive, and I, I still respect him, but in a way he's destroyed himself through, through trying to justify that hunch rather than take it further. <laughs> you know what I mean? Very why? Hmm? Do you want to know who it is? I, I'm a couple of faces of time. <laughs> now then, oh, I'm sorry. Cedric, do you do research? And if yes, why? And how can you assess its usability, usefulness, and risk? In the, in the terms I've described it tonight, I do research. Yes, I said it's a rough research. It certainly isn't pure research. It, it's, it is not necessarily an aim in view. Therefore, it isn't necessarily justifiable at the start, but it's interested in me. But it's coarse research in so much as it's been started by some sort of irritant or carbuncle on one hand or um, an opportunity. A, a flash of, I mean, I do really get pleased in, in actually seeing an area of doubt that no one else has seen. It's that space between those ducks that very often starts me off. I, the question came up a little bit last night. So answer, in a very rough way, I do research, and those who've worked for me here uh, know how rough it is. Though I must say that I do in, uh, involve others who are, who are rather more um, uh, both academically and mentally disciplined to do it 
to, to exercise a rather more classical approach to the research that I'm involved with. So that's answer your first one. Now, what were the three other bits? How useful is it or suddenly? Why? Oh, why? <coughs> oh, I, th I think it's the same reasons I give a talk like this. <laughs> Absolutely the same reason. I mean, I find, and it's this stage, it's your questions, or it's, it's, it's uh, trying to get through to someone. Um, it, it, it's, uh, it's uh, the why is the doing of it. It's another test. It's another stretch. It's, it's, um, it, actually, it isn't easy to give a talk like that. He'll tell you, uh, like this. And perhaps the agonist comes through. It's not actually very easy, but it's an awfully good a bit of ordering. And uh, I think that when one operates, um, funny enough, it comes back in a very, it, it very parish pump sort of way. Um, thinking of, of someone who I admire greatly and who took a great role, <laughs> one way or another, in yesterday's events, David Alford. Um, he has now, his firm is so big, he has two partners meetings a week. He has the partners on Monday and the associate partners on Tuesday. Now, that's two nights of every week. But he does have, he knows that he's got two nights of, of testing himself with his other partners. You know, it isn't all misery and gloom. It isn't all... How do we pay for, for the 160th coffee machine or <laughs> the next computer? Um, now, I don't have that. And you have to, instead, as I say, I, I don't, and I, I don't, um, I'm not seen uh, in social events in the company of other architects. I prefer people who are lighter, both on their feet and in their imagination than architects. So that's why I do research. Oh, yes, it's very, it, it, it is very taxing. That's why. Now, in answer to your, you know, does it, is there a benefit of things? Now and again, yes, there is. I'm delighted to say, yes, yes, there is. And uh, I don't want to take too much of tomorrow's thing because I have nothing left. It'll be a very quick one. It is Friday. And there'll be a party, won't there, after this? Thanks, Al. Um, that, uh, that's quick. Um, that the, uh, the, the lovely thing is that uh, the results, because of this quite a long time game, halfway through, say, um, they're coming together. The bits are falling together. There's that boring sameness in what I'm interested in, which is Wonderful, because then I can start make, carving that next ball inside that whizzes in the other way, and then might do a cube in the next ball, and then a ball in that one. Yeah, marvellous. So it is, but not often. But yes, there is benefit. When you do research... So, uh, 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 well, no, no. okay, okay. When you do research, there's, uh, it's, a logical, it's a logical process where... Whatever, even, even though it's not scientific, the result in the end is somehow um, derived from a logical uh, thought. Isn't it a contradiction to the hunch? <laughs> oh, yes. I mean, logic is a contradiction to the hunch. So yes, absolutely. So when, yeah, there are two. When do you have a hunch and when do you have a <laughs> I think... Because if research gives an answer, then mine is always... Oh, no, 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 that's the whole point. That is what I'm saying. That's why I want both. Now, when is very difficult. I might, I might have three urges for research-based thinking and operation and only one hunch after, you know, then three more. So there's not that and then I'm going to change to let's have a hunch and then that. I don't know when, but I'd be very worried if I finished up just on hunches or just on research because it's that switch, it's that gap. I think there's a third thing possibly between the two. I'm not sure what it is, but my word, the switch is wonderful. 
the switch over. Oh, the relief at leaving that research and getting into a hunch. And, and, the, and the sort of repressed ex-Catholic delight at the, at the sort of um, urbanity and order that enables one to reject the hunch and back to pure research again. I mean, these are moments of great delight. No, no. Uh, but but the, the measure, the, the balance, I don't know. Now, thanks. You. Do you ever take, um, what is it like, uh, an intellectual soft option? The reason I ask is... Can you speak up a bit so they can hear? Yeah. Do you ever take um, a soft option on your thinking, assuming that um, a line of research you cast out your net and it doesn't give you the, <coughs> maybe the solution you're interested in, um, do you have anything to fall back on in your own mind, some deep structure that you can pick up and it, it, I, I'm afraid panic and timing comes into this one. Um, <coughs> and often I take a soft option if I'm really sort of trying to get some ordering, some result. Um, and the soft option could not be justified in the nice terms you just told me, that it's me drawing on an even deeper well of li life's long experience. Well, it's um, almost your greatest hits, I I, yes, I think that the, what I try, I think I probably do. The, the business is, I find that, that, that for easy running um, mental processes, uh, there, the, probably one, um, it, it's, it's interesting, it's a conceit. You're right. One probably, and in fact, I was talking to Pierre Cartwright about this earlier in relation to staircases, um, which uh, you know, it, it, it's a minor element. But uh, I think, in fact, I do sometimes panic and draw on um, something that I know is tried and works, and I think I very often make myself think, ah. How silly of me, it's inevitable that we should do this. I, I've dropped the questioning through the panic or the timing. But I'm not honest enough. I, I, I know I don't, and I probably should. I mean, this is, I know I don't actually say to myself in front of the mirror, blimey, we're short of time, why don't we do that which we don't on what's it? <laughs> I know I, I like to think, I, I, but the panic drives me into thinking that the thing I did on what's it really was as far as you could go, and why try and invent the wheel again? Yeah, and the, our discussion actually was just about that. There's a drawing up in relation to the Fun Palace where we decided we had actually um, exhausted for, and it was economic, we had questions of safety, questions of the structural support, questions of the variation of, of the <coughs> interval heights, and questions of the, the additional linkage of, of lifts, both passenger and, and service. And, and we, we optimized uh, a series of stairs, which for the fun pass, we might have been right. We said, that's it. There is no reason in thinking about staircases anymore for this. You know, there's enough. I don't know how many are. It's on a drawing, six or eight or something. And um, although I don't remember, and this is what Pear was asking about, I don't actually remember referring back to that drawing as a crib sheet. Certainly another drawing we did, which, and, and this is no secret because he asked for a copy, which Dennis Lasden asked for a copy of me, was a whole chart, which I normally try and get into the exhibition, but those girls in their wisdom said that it was even too boring for me and they weren't going to pin it up. Um, which is a whole a chart we've had for years, which we prepared, of areas of seating for theatres. That is, that it can be rephased for um, fire regulations or whatever, but it's the area of seating, a whole range of actual shapes, um, including sort of funny oblong ones and diagrams, not just a variation of squares and rectangles, that's what I'm saying, 
and three different inclined levels related to those shapes. So you might get uh, an uh, a triangular shaped area of seating that is inclined at three different angles in that triangle. And then we had height of front of stage, height of back of stage, height of things. And, and about eight figures and, and diagrams on each drawing and arrows. And we have used that year in, year out for other schemes. And that was prepared entirely just for the Fun Palace. And I've used that as, as, a, as a crib sheet, and I've never revised it. Yeah, you give me a nasty turn with that question, but very good, yeah. So the answer is yes. And I, I really sort of think it, deep drop, and it isn't. <laughs> I know. I mean, that's that's the whole thing. Well, I mean, the marvel, the Matt story. You see, I mean, that was one of the things. The last time I heard Charles Eames laugh was his whole essay on the, uh, you know, on the on the Japanese house and the mat was was what's it? Because they started eating beef and they don't fit those mats anymore. <laughs> and he liked that, but he was a he was a bigger designer than me, better as well. Mr. Hyatt, you, <laughs> you were going to ask me a question, right? Is this a new sort of... I didn't even put my hand up. You did earlier on, didn't you? No, or was it... Oh, oh, Lord. There's, n there's not much left. Treat it with care. What I'm imagining with the experience is that I was uh, involved in... Because I, I, I think that I've come to involved in the longest research programs that you actually... You did. did. You did. And one of the best. McHappy. That's right. Yes, went upstairs. Oh, here he goes. This is all from club room chat. We had enough of that dinner last night. I'm still convinced I got a disease. Yeah? The mm. I Yeah, so yeah. Oh, yes. Think glue. But that was because things had gone wrong. We actually had to find a very, very That's right, yes. Yes. Ah, oh, that's very good. It's lovely yeah. to have you here. Yeah. Not turning out tomorrow night, right? That was good, actually. I've never described that in that way. Uh, you are more accurate. Mine always, I have talked about that, about these, these great crash programs we have in the office, <laughs> such as one week or month, we had Think Glue. And that message was up everywhere, and anything you do. But in but fact, no, it was no, as a result of an emergency. No, but it was after the event. What? Yeah, oh yes, yes, I see, we'd solved this and we, yeah. I'm still very, actually I'm still very interested in glue. Because it, I tell you what, one of the magazines, um, and I'm keeping them so that I can give bound volumes to P. Cook Sunday, are the BRS reports that you get, used to get in the back of the IBA journal. Now you have to buy them. I read every one of those. I love them. I don't read the journal. I don't read it at all now. I mean, you know, and, they, and I, have, I pay now to get those things. They're marvelous. That is one end of, of uh, something that you can't actually, well, there's no possible reason that you could draw, having read one of those, anything that is in any way measurable or beneficial from how you were an hour before you started reading the thing. And it's the same with glue. You can't actually draw glue. You can't dimension it. It hasn't gone metric. Um, it's marvelous. It, it, and it's true. I'm also, which is not on the list, oh no, it is. I am a member of the best branch of the Royal Aeronautical Society, which is the Weybridge branch which is the only branch that actually is still making aircraft, and they are all glue fanatics. 
<laughs> it's sticking the whole bloody things together with glue. And we have evenings on glue. <laughs> glue evenings. Talking about it. Not sniffing it. Talking about it. I like it. Go on, it's voluntary night, anyone can leave. Yeah. The problem was actually gluing something else because we couldn't make it stick. It would go there, we couldn't fix it, we couldn't screw glue it, we couldn't build. Glue was the obvious answer, wasn't it? Ah, and ah. And so we had to research it again. Yes, we did. But we were mizzled, as my Auntie Nelly would say. We were mizzled the first time because they did say that it wouldn't affect that colour cake surface. You're right. Oh, absolutely. It's fascinating. I, I'm sure you want. Actually, there was one thing. Where, where is uh, Archie McRandall? Is he here tonight? Is it home? <laughs> one night was enough. <laughs> Because he was involved, and he found that glue for Blackpool, oh, yeah. where, we, where we glued... I mean, everyone glues glass together now, but that, oh boy, that was... It was so strong, <laughs> it shattered the glass ten feet either way, as it settled, as the joint hardened, and <laughs> dying. Yes, and oh, no, you have to be very careful with glue. It does make enormous demands on, on those two bodies that it's bringing together. Fascinating there, yes. Duxford, you know, they still do it there. Probably one of the best products of Cambridge, come to think of it. Those ones that come out of the buildings up the road aren't that cute. Well, it looks like it, except... Well, no, I actually... The smell of new-cut hay through the railway windows from Lemster to Ludlow is both rich and moist. <coughs> 8 a.m. 23.683. 9 a.m. 25.683. The smell of new-cut hay at 11 o'clock last night at the top of the old street, the Bull Ring, is still rich and moist. I wonder if the bull smelt it. The smell, oh, shut up. <laughs> and uh, then, uh, it's, it's, and I won't go on it, but it's fascinating. That's the sort of um, <clears throat> diary I write now. And I found those <laughs> in that thing. <laughs> I bought it. I just write times against everything. Like, uh, I, 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 that's, I mean, that's what we're talking about tonight. We're talking about research and cooperation. And I think one of the one of the most valuable bits of cooperation is, is an easy uh, reference back to notes that you keep only for yourself, because you know their relevance. You know whether, in fact, uh, it was worth doing in the first place. And I, I find those, those sort of notes as valuable as, as the sketchbooks I keep. In fact, very often more valuable because the sketchbooks tend to try and, in a way, produce a nice drawing. <laughs> um, or I wouldn't have started it. Uh, I, I, I'm not quite as honest as some. I mean, the best sketchbooks are by people who can't draw very well. They're, they're the really valuable tools. And um, of course, I can draw very, very well. <laughs> So, can I go back to Peter's question about hunches? Yeah. I mean, hunches are uh, also carefully uh, researched in a way, in reverse. In, yes, in reverse, yes. Because uh, to have a hunch about something is, in the end, to have built up quite a lot of insight into the nature of the problem, and uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's a trick. It's a triggering device, a hunch, yeah. but it's not built on, on zero, and, and it's a different kind of research. It's not uh, problem solving in your sense, or finding out how you do this or that. It's general culture, as they say. 
Right yes. So, I mean, that, that, very, that is right. It is. It is actually yes, and also it's it's the in reverse bit that you're right about. That in fact, over the years, I think you exclude the climate that enables a particular sort of hunch. So you've d well. Yeah, yes, I mean, which is a reverse thing. You've actually, you, you, you kill off hunches. It's, it's like this business that uh, the, um, the whole business when Dutch elm disease occurred, um, because the, the, uh, the sort of spores that a healthy elm gave out uh, didn't encourage mushrooms, when they started dying, everything else was ideal for mushrooms, and so mushrooms grow around diseased elms, edible ones. And it's rather like in the, uh, the biggest, you know, the Joe Lyons, when they were the biggest food manufacturer in this country, had over the boardroom in Cadbury Hall, a sign, and there were no pictures on the wall, it was a very severe boardroom, and there was just this one slogan. And, it, and they'd had it from 1930, which I didn't realize the stuff was even available then. It said, apart from the fact it is inedible, green plastic parsley meets every single requirement of this company. <laughs> and it, it's very, it, you know, it looks right, it's the right color, it's the right cost, you can always get it. They didn't care about taste. Well, you, what do you want? It says apart from the fact that it's inedible. <laughs> if it's inedible, you don't care about taste or nutrition. What's this new school of, of, of negative negativism growing up in the front row? Is that mine? Did Peter give it to you? No. Oh, would you like a draw? No. Oh, why is it there? Oh, Lord, I've got my drink here. Um, we're carrying on with the discussion, aren't we? Now, anyone else? <laughs> no? <laughs> you, you're right. You're obviously planted there by Alvin to kill the evening. Yeah, go on. No. <laughs> what? Which? What? <laughs> I, what do you mean? The hunch came out of much well, research? I mean, the I, I mean, the, the research had been done by 100, 115 years of the Royal Zoological Society. And one superb, voluble, modest, clever, and staggeringly patient spokesman called John Yellen, who was curator of birds. No, no, it wasn't. No. The chief architect for San Diego Zoo is a man who is joking, me, well, joking me, actually his name is Faust. Um, he had actually done a walk, away, walk through Avery. I mean, it's a different sort of, it's, a, it's in a big shed. It's not mesh, but it's a walk through Avery. So, so that's what? That's a mixture of right. No, 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 it's fair. No, I mean, no, but I mean, no. But, but, no, ah, I see what you mean. No, that wasn't, no, I must, and this is very nice of you, but again, yes. they, the client, uh, in, the, in the shape, which was a very multi-headed shape, I agree, of the Zoological Society, were interested in the idea of a walk through Avery. They were interested in it. Because the San Diego one had been mentioned in, in what is probably, or what was then, I think one of the best zoological magazines uh, uh, in the world, beautifully called Zoo News. <laughs> it still comes out, Z-O-O-N-O-O-Z, -O -O an American magazine, and they'd read about it in that. Zoo News. So it wasn't that the walkthrough bit wasn't, I mean, the brilliance of the walkthrough, yeah. The fact that it does shake and wobble and makes you relieved to get to the other side, yeah. Cedric, thank you very much. You're cutting me short. <laughs> <laughs> it's all going to be happening again tomorrow night at the same time, Cedric, and we look forward to it with great pleasure. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for coming.
Thank you very much. <laughs> when you get to Zoo News, I thought absolutely. I thought that.